فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم نمبر 6 ذا 6th reason is because the way that the disbelievers are steadfast upon their kufr and their batil why are we not steadfast upon our belief and our religion brothers do they suffer from the consequences of democracy do they suffer from the atrocities and the harms that democracy has given them of course they do even then they are steadfast they are upright on democracy why do we have to leave a complete beautiful religion of and a way of life Allah says in the Quran in takunu ta'lamuna if you guys are suffering and you're finding pain fa innahum ya'lamuna kama ta'lamun they are finding pain the way you guys are finding pain wa tarjuna min Allah ma la yarjun but you're even better you're hoping from Allah and they're not hoping from anyone are you with me so they are steadfast upon it we have Allah Allah is our nasir Allah is our hafiz Allah is the one who's protecting us. Allah is the one who's given is given us victory subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is the one who's defending us subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is our ally. And anyone who has all of that does he require to have to turn towards something that is false. The seventh reason which why we can't bring Islam and democracy together my beloved brothers and sisters is because we were commanded to call these people from kufr and batil to islam we weren't told to go to them and we weren't told to go into their their midst allah says subhanahu wa ta'ala in the quran qul ya ahl al-kitab say to the people of the scripture ta'alu kam ila kalimatin sawa'in baynana wa baynakum alla na'buda illa allah wa la nushrika bihi shay'a wa la yatakhidha ba'duna ba'dan arbaban min duni allah fa in tawallaw fa qulu ashhad bi anna muslimun Say to them, Muhammad, Ta'ala, come. To what? A word that we have in common. And what is it that we have in common? We have to common in Rububiyah. Now that we agree upon Rububiyah, let's move on to Uluhiyah. And la na'buda illallah, that we don't worship anybody other than Allah. That we don't worship anybody other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that we don't associate partners with Him. وَلَا يَتَّخِذَ بَعْضُنَا بَعْضًا أَرْبَابًا مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ and we don't take amongst ourselves rabb what is democracy you take the people are the rabb the people are the masdar tashri' they are rabb they are legislators fa in tawallaw if you turn away faqulu shad bi anna muslimun if you guys turn away then you guys need to know we're muslims we're not going to move from our position we're muslims we stay upon islam so we were told to call these people to eat what islam and we sadly see muslims calling the muslims away from islam and at tawhid and a sunnah and ta'a and they're calling them to election and democracy inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un see how shaitan beautifies things and how he confuses the people inna lillahi and that's his job wa la udhillannahum wa la umanniyannahum wa la amurannahum fa la yubattikunna adhana la al'ami wa la amurannahum fa la yughayyiruna khalqa allah وَمَنْ يَتَّخِذِ الشَّيْطَانَ وَلِيًّا مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ فَقَدْ خَسِرَ خُسْرَانًا مُبِينًا يَعِدُهُمْ وَيُمَنِّيهِمْ وَمَا يَعِدُهُمُ الشَّيْطَانُ إِلَّا غُرُورًا Democracy, what does it do today? The people have been promised every year the, the candidate, the, the general election, the president, the prime minister that's coming, every, he promises the people everything. يَعِدُهُمْ وَيُمَنِّيهِمْ He places hope and, 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 and promises in the heart. Allah says, and he's a shaytan. وَمَا يَعِدُهُمُ الشَّيْطَانُ إِلَّا غُرُورًا This shaytan is not promising them except deception. He's lying to them. I promise you I'll build you guys more masjids. I promise you. And we haven't seen anything except it got worse, right? The last one, and why we can't bring Islam and democracy is because if we believe in democracy and we accept it, then we're not true believers anymore. It's one of two, either democracy or Islam. Allah says to us, فَمَنْ يَكْفُرُ بِالطَّاوُوتِ وَيُؤْمِنْ بِاللَّهِ There's no two parts. فَمَنْ يُؤْمِنْ بِالطَّاوُوتِ فَمَنْ يَكْفُرُ بِالطَّاوُوتِ وَيُؤْمِنْ بِاللَّهِ So kufr has to be for one of the two. Your kufr is either to ta'awut or it's to Allah. Sah, brothers? 
فقد استمسك بالعروة الوثقى على انفصام لها هي is a very powerful question why did Allah كفر بالطاغوت بفوق الإيمان بالله <تصفيق> صح ودي يسي فما يكفر بالطاغوت ويؤمن بالله صح brothers brothers pay attention to this والله I really want you guys to I'm reading these ayat and I'm trying to make you guys understand what it means Allah is saying فمن يكفر بالطاغوت ويؤمن بالله وهو الهبل فقد استمسك بالعروة الوثقى لم فصام لها you have hold, held onto a rope this rope is so strong it will not cut itself this is a rope from you to Allah strong rope in other words you're truly connected with Allah but what is it are you with me brothers kufr bittagut number one and then an imanu billah if you do al imanu bittagut you have done kufr billah so let's turn the verse فَمَنْ يُؤْمِنْ بِالطَّاغُوتِ وَيَكْفُرُ بِاللَّهِ فَلَمْ يَسْتَمْسِكْ He hasn't held on to بِالْعُرْوَةِ الْوُثْقَى لَمْ فِصَامَ لَهَا Are you with me? No. Not only that, Allah tells us that this is the issue of الكفر بالطاغوت is something that all religions Are you with me brothers? All religions Are you with me? This is the thing that every prophet would call his people to. Al Kufr bi Taghut. So it's not something exclusive to our religion. Allah says, وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةِ الرَّسُولًا أَنِعْبُ اللَّهَ وَجْتَنِي بِ Taghut. Every prophet, مِنْ لَدُّ النُّوحَ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامِ From Nabi Allah Nuhan until our time today, every single prophet, what would he do? Al Iman bi Allah, أُعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَشِبْ اللَّهَ وَجْتَنِي بِ Taghut and disbelieve and stay away from Al Taghut. Before we read the ayah, Alam tara ila alladhina yaz'umuna annahum amanu bima unzila ilayka wa ma unzila min qablik yuridun an yatahakamu ila taaguti wa qad umiru an yakfuru bih wa yuridu shaytanu an yudillahum dalalan ba'idah Are you with me brothers? Democracy is akbaru tawaqit It's from the biggest taaguti there is Are you with me brothers? Brothers It is from there? It is sad now We find a person who claims knowledge who has Islamic knowledge and has understood the religion and he goes and he says Islam is democracy Islam is democracy rather went even further and said he went even further and what did he say he said some people have democracy phobia they have what Democracy, phobia, they can't hear democracy, he said they have to leave that, Islam is democracy, this actually allows the American troops that went to Iraq, Afghanistan and that went to destroy the Muslim lands, you have given them a justification, how have you given them a justification, if you're saying that democracy is Islam America was calling those people to Islam. Are you with me? Because America, what was he doing? If you don't take democracy today, you're an extremist, right? If you don't take democracy as a, a way of life, why did he go to Iraq? To enforce democracy on them. Why did he go to Afghanistan? To enforce democracy onto them. Why did he destroy Muslim land one after the other, kill innocent w w women and children? It's to force what on them? It was to enforce democracy on them. And the Sha'ab and the people were saying, we don't want that. So what were they labeling them as? Extremists. Extremist. So you have now given them a tabrir. You've given them an ex... ex hadi, haqiqatan, this is ma yastalzimu min kalami. That's what necessitates from the statement of yours. And of course we believe that lazimul madhab laysa bil lazim hatta yaltazim bihi sahibu. That a statement, if we insist it from a person's speech, that doesn't necessarily mean that that's what they're saying until they accept it. But that's the dangers of that statement and the severity in it. That you should watch what you say and what you speak. You should watch what a person says. That the Muslims today should, they are told to disbelieve in it. And you're saying they've got democracy phobia. They are told to disbelieve in it. Kufr bi
نعم now inshallah ta'ala which is we finished the first part which is democracy and its meaning we now want to speak about what's the ruling of the statement which says that democracy an election is actually shura al-islamiyah what would be the best definition for the word shura <coughs> consultation Counsel. yeah, cons counseling consultation now wallahi brothers i say if it wasn't fear for the laymen and, and the people getting confused with this statement i don't really even think it deserves any time to be spent in mentioning this that some this statement would actually be given time to be responded to it. that's how low and that's how pathetic it is but before i mention anything i just want to remind the person who claimed that statement may allah guide him and myself i just want to remind him a statement of the messenger alayhi salatu wasalam this hadith is in sahihain from hadith abi huraira that the prophet alayhi salam said inna al abda la yatakallam bi al kalimati ma yatabayyan fiha yazilu biha fi al nar abad ma bayna al mashriq wal maghrib that a person will say a statement a person will say a statement this statement ma yatabayyan fiha it doesn't clarify in it this person slides and goes into the hellfire yazilu biha fi al nar abad ma bayna al mashriq wal maghrib Allah, this has been said based on what بغير علم ولا هدى ولا كتاب منير. This statement was said without guidance. It was said without any knowledge, and Allah, it was said without any any Quran supporting that. And here, here is why. Democracy and election can never ever be mentioned in the same context as shura. Allah, it can't be mentioned. With it, la fil asli wa la fil furuh. Not in fundamental issues and not even branches. La fil kulli wa la fil juzi. It can't even be mentioned in kul in everything, the comprehensive issues, and Allah can't be mentioned in the issues which are sub branches. La fil ma'ala wa la fil mabla. Not in the meaning or the construction. And the reason is for as follows. Number one, who is the one who legislates in democracy? The kufar. Who is the one who legislates in shura? Allah. Can the human, does the human have any rights to legislate? Does he have any rights to legislate? In democracy he does, but not in Islam. Good. Is the legislation of the people accepted in Islam? No, no it's not accepted. Good. <coughs> that's, that's enough for us to stop there, but we're not going to. That's enough to say that that is enough to know that this has nothing to do with shura. Second reason is because, the second reason is shura is connected to the, the Muslim and how their affairs are run. And the people who do it are people known as al-ahlul ahlul halli wal aqd which we're going to mention later, how the Islam Muslim leader is appointed. We're going to mention who they are. But Ahlul Halli Wal Aqd are ulama, salihin, mukhlisin. They're the scholars, righteous people, people who have strength and power and ability. Who's the one who's democracy? Are you with me, brothers? Who is the one who stands for democracy? Who's the one who... It's connected to the criminal, kuffar, men, women, all of them. And democracy is to make the righteous person, the salih, a tayyib, the righteous, noble Muslim believer, is made and he is made equal to the criminal disbeliever. I put it in the same context. And Allah says in the Quran, أَفَنَجْعَلُ الْمُسْلِمِينَ كَالْمُجْرِمِينَ مَا لَكُمْ كَيْفَ تَحْكُمُونَ Allah says, do we make the believer like the criminal? Malakum, what is it that you guys are judging? Also, Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala says, Am Hasib al Ladina Chitala Husay Ati, and Najalahum Ken Ladina Aman, who Amil Salihati Sawa, and Mahyahum Mamatum, Sayamah Kumun. Those who make what? Al Ladina Aman, who Amil Salihati Sawa, and Mahyahum. They make the believing righteous ones 
They make them like the what? The people who are criminals. So Allah says, نَجْعَلُوا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ كَالْمُفْسِدِينَ فِي الْأَرْضِ أَمْ نَجْعَلُوا الْمُتَّقِينَ كَالْفُجَّارِ Making the muttaqeen like the fujjar. Making the ones who come with al-iman wal-amal al-salih kal-mufsidina fil ard like those who are causing corruption on this earth. Number three, the reason why shura and intikhabat, I mean shura and election and democracy can't be the same is because ahlu shura, I mean doing shura doesn't mean you make halal that which is haram and haram which is halal. You're not legislating. You don't justify a batil and you don't nullify a truth. Whereas democracy, no. They actually legislate. They make halal haram and haram halal. They nullify the truth. They give victory to batil. <coughs> the people, Ahl al-Shura, they consult one another in things that become ambiguous and unclear to them. Matters which are haqq. They discuss it amongst themselves how to execute it. They are actually following a legislation and they are following the Quran and the Sunnah in this. They just want to know the implications and how to explain it. They don't come with a new law that opposes the law of Allah. They don't innovate. They don't please with batil. Number four. <coughs> Shura is not in every affairs. It's in matters which are nadir. It's in matters which are rare. Because the Prophet ﷺ didn't take shura in everything. Alayhi It was rare that he did. Alayhi Matters which have the hukum of Allah in it. Do you do shura on it? There's a hukum clear cut there. You don't do shura on it. Allah's hukum is already there. That needs to be taken. Are you there? Five, shura is not fard, it's not wajib every time and every place. It differs. In some circumstances it's wajib, in some circumstances it's not wajib. And that's what we find the Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam, in some of the ghazawad, some of the ma'arik, he would take, consult the companions. And in others he never consulted them alayhi salatu wasalam. So it was in different situations in democracy. Every single person has to fall under it. Why is America going and bombing the Muslim people? <coughs> Everyone has to accept democracy. Or else you are what? Extremist. You're a terrorist. Nah. So they enforce it on the people. And it's obligatory for everybody to submit to it. So, yeah. Where in this country can we accept? Do we, do we have to accept democracy in this country? Are we forced to accept it? They force us to accept it. Well, in the Muslim world, are we forced to do shura in everything? We're not forced to. Number six. <laughs> Democracy rejects the Sharia of Islam. And it tries in any way, form or shape, that if it could show how weak Islam is and how it's not befitting to this time and this era that we're living in. Shura, on the other hand, it gives every effort to strengthen Islam and to show that it's actually befitting for every time and place. Number seven, Shura came when Islam came. So democracy, it came in the last two to three centuries. Whereas Shura came when Islam came. If we say, brothers, that Shura, okay, is what democracy is, then that would mean that the Prophet was a Demo Democrat and his companions were Democrats and all the Muslims were. So you're going to say that the Prophet was a Demokrati? Are you going to say the companions were? Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. The eighth and the last one, which is that democracy, its meaning is that the people, they pass law, they legislate, they execute, and they, they are the judicial system. And shura is what? It is to consult, it is to discuss a matter. It is not to initiate a, a law that has no foundation in the religion. But it's actually to help one another in understanding the truth. It's to take this sub-branch and bring it back to the kulliyat, the comprehensive. It means this, these nawazi, these contemporary issues that are coming, to take it back to the 
the time of the Prophet ﷺ, if anything resembles that had happened. But it's not to initiate a new law. As you all know, my beloved brothers and sisters, the general election is going to happen soon in the, in the UK. Many people are going to elect. And the general election is that, that the people, they elect a representative on their behalf to legislate. In the UK, for example, the House of Commons, and with them comes a constitution. That constitution is what's going to be judged through the country. So you're choosing, you're endorsing a person to go out and to judge for you based on that constitution. So what are the harms that it has? The first harm that it has, and this is, the, this is now move, us moving on to the first chapter after finishing the introduction, is that the harms that it has. The first one is Al-Ishraqu Billah, your associating partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is called shirk wa ta'ah, the shirk of obedience. You're actually, anybody now who accepts democracy and is pleased with democracy and believes it's correct, then that person has obeyed the enemies of Islam. He's opposed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's command. And that is Ain shirk fi ta'ah. That's exactly the reality and the true essence of Associate partners in Allah in obedience. That's why Allah says in the Quran, "Amlahu shuraka sharau lahu min al-din ma lam yadam bihi Allah." And it falls under the ayah, "Dalikum bi anum qalu lil ladina karihu ma nazzal Allah sunu tiyukum fi baad al-amr." We took that. Rather, the kuffar came with a shubha. They came to the messenger and they said to the Prophet, "Ali sallallahu alaihi wasallam, Muhammad, you slaughter." And you say what well, I slaughter is halal. And you say that the animal that Allah killed, that's dead, that's found dead, you say it's haram. So you're saying my killing is permissible and Allah's killing is haram. Allah says if you accept this from them, this argument of theirs, this shubhad of theirs, Allah says, وَإِنْ أَطَعْتُمُوهُمْ إِنَّكُمْ لَمُشْرِكُونَ If you accept this argument of theirs, then you are mushrik. Intikhabat, which is elections, Intikhabat is, is it from the Sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, election? Or is it from the legislation of the people? Based on the definition I gave you was what? Is that you're electing a representative to legislate. And that, my beloved brothers and sisters, is actually what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned about those who took their rabbis and their monks Lords besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, What did they do? They took their rabbis and their monks, legislated for them. And that's exactly what you're doing. You're actually taking... Are you with me, brothers? <coughs> you're actually... So, sorry, sorry. What did they do? They take their rabbis and their monks, legislators for them. Sah? What would they do? Make halal for them, that which Allah made haram for them, and that which Allah made haram for them, make a halal for them. Are you with me, brothers? Who was legislating? The rabbis and the monks. And the people took them as a source of evidence. Are you with me? Are you with me, brothers? Imagine if the rabbi and the monk is not legislating. You're the one who's legislating. Then the people are the ones who are legislating. He's just representing them in the House of Parliament. The matter gets worse. The matter gets worse. That you are the actual one who's doing it. Al Ibn Kathir said in the ayah, وَإِنْ أَطَعْتُمُوهُمْ إِنَّكُمْ لَمُشْرِكُونَ If you obey them, then you're a mushrik. Ibn Kathir says, حَيْثُ This is when you guys عَدَلْتُمْ عَنْ أَمْرِ اللَّهِ That you turn away from the commands of Allah. And you turn away from the legislation of Allah Ta'ala. إِلَىٰ قَوْلِ غَيْرِهِ And you turn to the speech of other than Allah. And you give precedence to those speeches over Allah wa Taala. فَهَذَا هُوَ الشِّرْكُ That is shirk. So anybody who obeys the mushrikeen, the disbelievers, and he believes what they are saying is correct, even if it's one matter, just one matter. Are you with me? Just one matter, even if it's that slaughter, then that person becomes a 
mushrikan. He becomes a mushrik. And it goes against the ayah wa makana li mu'minin wa la mu'minatin idha qadha Allah wa rasoolu amran an yakuna lahum al-khiratu min amrihim. That it is not befitting for a believing man or woman if Allah and his messenger have passed the legislation an yakuna lahum al-khirat. You don't have no choice. وَمَا يَعْصِي اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ فَقَدْ ضَلَّ الضَّلَالَ مُبِيلًا Election is saying I have a choice. And Allah said you have no choice. Election is you being given the rights and the voice to choose. Are you with me brothers? To legislate. To send a representative. To legislate on your behalf. <coughs> Are you with me brothers? Allah is saying to you have no choice. You're a slave who's held from the nose. Tell you to go right, you go right. I tell you to go left, you go. You go left. Also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَلَا وَرَبِّكَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ حَتَّى يُحَكِّمُكَ فِي مَا شَجَرَ بَيْنَهُمْ ثُمَّ لَا يَجِدُوا فِي أَنفُسِمْ حَرَجًا مِمَّا قَضَيْتُ وَيُسَلِّمُ تَسْلِيمًا You have no other choice. Allah in his message says something. You just have to submit. You have no choice to do ta'qimat. And to add things on. We're going to come to that inshaAllah ta'ala. So if you look at the ayat, they're excessive in number. That warn against opposing the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is not right for us, my beloved brothers and sisters, to take the matter very lightly. The second reason why election, and the second harm the election has is, the majority are ilah. The majority is what are the ilah. Whatever they say is accepted. وَإِنْ كَانَ بَاطِلًا Even if it's batil, right? And whatever they reject is rejected. وَإِنْ كَانَ مَعْلُومٌ مِنَ الدِّينِ بِالْضَرُوَةِ Even if it is a matter known out of necessity in the religion. And it goes against the statement of Allah. وَاللَّهُ يَحْكُمُ لَا مُعَقِّبَ لِحُكْمِهِ And Allah decides there is no adjuster of his decisions. No one can come and adjust Allah Taala's decisions. The election is actually adjusting Allah Taala's decisions, but that's not, it's not even adjusting what Allah Taala. It's actually initiating and coming with something new. Because to adjust it means that the original thing is already there. You're actually dismantling that in totality, and you're bringing something new. <coughs> Are you with me? Allah has never asked what he does, why he does it. But you are asked. Allah also says, Allah is the subjugator over his creation, right? And his servants. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, the issue is majority. And we're going to go more into that. That the issue is what? The majority and the number. If the majority are in accordance to the Sharia, the majority are in, the, in accordance to the Sharia, in a matter, and they are not in agreement to the Sharia because they wanted to, it's just that they liked it. Does that in Islam, what's the rule regarding that? The majority are in accordance to the Sharia. Ah. The Kuffar today pass a law and it is exactly what the Sharia ah believes. But they, didn't want it, they were not looking at it as though it's a Sharia ah law. Or even in a Muslim country, the majority agree on something. But their intent wasn't to go in accordance to the Sharia. Ah. Are you with me, brothers? Are you there? That legislator is, that legislator is still in the hellfire. وَإِنْ وَافَقَ الْحَقِّ Even if it is in agreement with the Haqq. As the Prophet ﷺ said, الْقُضَاتُ ثَلَاثَةٌ The judges are three. قَاضِيَانِ فِي النَّارِ Two are in the hellfire. وَقَاضِي فِي الْجَنَّةِ And one is in Jannah. الَّذِي فِي الْجَنَّةِ The one who is in Jannah is رَجُّ عَلِمَ الْحَقَّ فَقَضَى بِهِ The one who knows the truth and he judges by it. وَالَّذَانِ فِي النَّارِ And the two that are in the hellfire is رَجُّلٌ عَالِمٌ بِالْحَقِّ وَرَجُلٌ جَهِلَ بِالْحَقِّ And the second one is, he is ignorant about the truth, فَقَضَى بِهِ And he judges, and he, based, he judges based on it. He's ignorant and he judges. Are you there? He's in the hellfire. The Prophet said, 
Are you with me, brothers? Where is he? Why is he in the hellfire? He, he judged. Even if he's in accordance to the haq. Even if he is what? In accordance to the haq. 